a small video, uh, just a review of the year's webinar events of Inbar. And we have many pictures from the construction seminar. This is one, our, our group photo, Marusho. Our discussions, presentations. David, chair of the task force, Ken's presentation. Moderators, our presenters, structures we showed, designs. Okay, participants, we are starting our session. Hello, my friends, buenos dias, mis amigos. Bonjour, mes amis, 朋友们,你们好,晚上好. Welcome to the last session of the International Online Seminar, Bamboo, a very sustainable construction material. Session five, structural use of engineered bamboo. I am Jin Wei, Capacity Building Manager of INBAR. Thank you to Kuei, who gave me this chance to moderate the closing session of the seminar. In the past five weeks, members of INBAR Bamboo Construction Task Force have presented to us a feast of knowledge and practical cases of the latest bamboo construction development in the world. I felt most happy to see participants' favorable comments let me read one to you. Congratulations to all speakers for today. All the presentations are very informative and seems have tackled all the important information pertaining to the topics. I really appreciate new learnings about bamboo as construction material, new designs and how to retain its durability from Chita Hidalgo. On behalf of the Inba webinar team, I would like to express our gratefulness to the task force members. Your hard works in the past several months make this seminar a highlight and a great celebration of the year's INBA webinar campaign. We have created a high record of more than 1,000 times persons of live participants and nearly 2,000 registrations from 78 countries from the world. Due to the global lockdown, in face of the pandemic, INBA's global training activities 
were suspended. To continue with training and capacity building for professionals, researchers, policymakers, entrepreneurs, and partner agencies of INBAR, we initiated the webinar series. After this session, INBAR have completed 53 webinars this year, among which 28 were organized from headquarters. About 160 panelists joined our webinars, including the four presented here today. We have covered bamboo for environment management, bamboo for poverty alleviation and sustainable development, bamboo industry development, bamboo for health and welfare, and bamboo as a sustainable construction material. This seminar, close to the end of the year, had pushed the total number of our live participants to over 7,000 and the online reviews to 35,000 on Inba YouTube and Tencent channels. In 2021, besides continuing with our normal thematic topics and complete the unfinished topics such as policies, return sustainable development, we will seek opportunities to organize more seminars on hot topics such as climate, construction, energy, and initiative industry development. We will also seek ways to establish an online forum where we could keep you in a loop and arrange regular exchanges of key issues. At year end, with my full sincerity, I'm sorry. Evid. At year end, with my full sincerity, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all that have given strong supports in making this happen. My colleagues, friends, alumni, the panelists, and especially our participants. At the beginning of our webinar series in June, we don't know how big is our friend loop and where are they. It was a surprise that our first session got 268 live participants, and now our followers accumulated to nearly 2,000, and the figure is still increasing. And now here you are, you've helped us understand much better our friend loop around the world, and your valuable feedbacks told us where we should make efforts to in the coming year. I remembered every exciting moment we shared on our learning path in the past several months. You showed high sincerity, strong persistence and initiatives, the two valuable Nantimba uh, forest resources development. Let me show the faces of you. First, I would like to show the faces of my colleagues who had supports, support me in the webinars. Uh, Mr. Jayaraman Durai, our program, uh, program department director, Hao Ying, Membership Affairs Director, Jun Qi, Communications Director, Ke Wei, Yan Xia, Chun Tang Long, Dr. Fu Jinghe, Liu Qinghui, Guo Yu Chen, Pablo Hakam, Pablo Iscuyoto, Renee Kam. Moni from India, <laughs> Ernest, Sang Wei, Xu Dong, and Mundimagum Bikil, and many other staffs who has been supporting us. Then we have the regular participants. I would like to mention your name. And if you if you are here, please show your face. Dalsi Pangdalan, Samir Jamashia, Rinaldo Lanuza. Emmanuel Apia Kupi, Aliu Nian, Zulu Kumzuk Pongen, Su Wen Ai, Cho Cho Win, Luke Broderib, Hugh Scott, Chita Hidalgo, Piu Piu Win, Fabiano Ostapiv, Sylvia Michel, Ashbia, Daniel Dale, Mike Gomei, Court two, et cetera, et cetera. So many of you. Dear participants, kindly please uh, be noted that uh, 
we are we are going to having two upcoming uh, web webinars in December before Christmas. One is a uh, local bamboo development cases on 8th December, presented by three local governments from Anji, Yong'an, and Qingyuan, and the international online seminar on bamboo for conservation of giant panda, presented by Sichuan Provincial Department, Forestry and Grassland, together with Yimba on 22nd December. So uh, I will share the links with you later. Now, let's come back to our own session. Let me invite Mr. Kent Harris to introduce our first presenter. Kent, please. Hi, thank you. Thank you, uh, Shen. Um, I'd like to also express my welcome, everybody, and, and um, say good morning from a very snowy Pittsburgh this morning. It's cold and wet, and there's a lot of snow on the ground, which I think is a little bit different for, for some of us. Um, we've got a long day uh, or a long morning ahead of us, long afternoon ahead of us, um, so I'd like to get, uh, get started. Um, our first presenter, uh, Professor Yan Zhao, is going to give a talk, The Development of Glue Laminated Bamboo, Glue Bam, and cross-laminated bamboo and timber. Um, Professor Zhao um, is certainly probably the best placed individual to give this particular talk. And on a personal note, I, I've known Professor Zhao for probably longer than either of us care to mention. Uh, we've served on, on committees together at ASC and ACI going back quite some time in composite construction. Um, and, and so we both somehow arrived back at bamboo as well. Um, so Professor Zhao is the Changjiang and Expert Distinguished Professor at Zhejiang University and the University of Illinois Joint Institute. Um, he's received degrees from Changjian and Kyosho. And, um, excuse me, uh, has had academic roles, uh, was a full tenure, is, I believe is still a full tenured professor at the University of Southern California, was the Dean of Civil Engineering at Hunan University, recently also at Nanjing Tech. And um, he serves a number of professional roles, including an AE for the ASCE Journal of Structural Engineering, Bridge Engineering, and on the editorial board of the Journal of Constructional Steel Research. We won't hold that against him at a bamboo conference. He is a fellow of ASCE and ACI and a registered uh, professional engineer in the state of California, and probably most relevant to our current uh, talk is the inventor of glue BAM. So, Professor Zhao. Thank you very much, Kent. And thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Jinwei and uh, Ke Wei. And also, it's a privilege to be here. And also, uh, it's really a great event that uh, INBAR organized. And, and so, this is uh, great. And now we have 112 uh, participants for this session. And it seems to be the number is growing. Uh, it's very nice to see uh, many of the uh, familiar faces, uh, although different higher hairstyle, Ken. <laughs> uh, but but uh, it's it's great to see all of you, and uh, I hope all of you and your families are uh, healthy, well uh, in this uh, very difficult time. And I hope we're seeing the the end, uh, the light of the long tunnel. Uh, so. So anyway, how do I do? Do I just uh, share my uh, screen, or just uh, how do I turn on my uh, my PPT? Yeah, uh, uh, share screen. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes, got it. Thank you. Okay. Now uh, I can uh, start my presentation. <coughs> As uh, Professor uh, Ken Harris mentioned, uh, my presentation title uh, is going to be a, uh, its development of a glue, glue the laminated bamboo or a glue bam, and cross laminated bamboo and the timber. And so, uh, so he has already kindly introduced myself, so I will not repeat. And th these are my uh, emails, so for, for other friends who can uh, contact me through the email. 
Uh, first, first of all, I would like to acknowledge uh, many of the sponsoring agencies, including the uh, Nas NSO National Science Foundation of China and the Ministry of Education and other uh, ministries of, uh, uh, in China, and also the Blue Moon Fund uh, uh, of USA. And particularly, I would like to thank uh, INBAR for their uh, su support and also uh, having me to be associated with them. Uh, I also would like to acknowledge my students who got a PhD from me and also colleagues working on bamboo. And I have, over the years, I have many uh, talented students and staffs working with me. Uh, this is the contents of my presentation. Uh, first, I will very briefly give an uh, introduction and the background of, uh, about bamboo. And one of the most important motivations of my work was uh, the trying to duplicate what the uh, timber industry uh, in the industrialized country like the US, uh, Europe, uh, and Japan, and Central. And, and these are timber structures. Um, I went back to China about uh, 10 years, more than 10 years ago, about 15 years ago, and uh, surprisingly found out that in China, there's not too many uh, modern industrialized timber structure going on. And however, there's uh, uh, excellent development of a bamboo. So then had the idea to try to uh, do something with uh, uh, bamboo, but uh, try to serve uh, to make it serve as a uh, alternative of uh, modern timber structures. Uh, as you can see, this is a, a, a big girder, which is basically a glue lamb girder. Uh, that that is essentially why, where the glue band, this terminology came from. So anyway, and also the great, uh, very widely distribution for bamboo resources in the world. And particularly in China, uh, the bamboos are very available, uh, particularly in the southern part of uh, China. Uh, well, this, this, the order is a little bit of something wrong, but I would like to, somehow this page came up. Uh, <coughs> surprisingly, I, I was uh, quite fortunate to start to work on bamboo uh, in the, uh, uh, around the, uh, 2005. And uh, we just recently took a look, uh, account of the journal papers published by scholars uh, in the world, which are science, science index paper. Uh, so about uh, like uh, 2008, and not too many papers per year, but last year we have 100 papers published in various, uh, uh, mostly fairly good journals. And uh, surprisingly, uh, two thirds of them are, are Chinese scholars. <laughs> Secondly, I would like to uh, uh, go into the discussion and introduction about engineered bamboo, uh, which is my work is mainly on the glue band. Uh, first of all, I, I'd like to try. I'd like to try to give a definition about engineered and industrialized uh, bamboo structures. So I believe, uh, basically, I call uh, they have two uh, main characteristics. One is uh, the use of a bamboo or bamboo-based material. The secondly, uh, the structures are designed, processed uh, with modern engineering methodologies and construction method and including inspection methods, etc. So our work is on the glue band. Glue band is basically, basically it's a glued laminated bamboo. Uh, it, it is a basically a material uh, of structural components made through two-step uh, processing uh, lamination. Uh, here, I'd like to summarize in uh, uh, an analogical way uh, of a comparative uh, introduction about the industrialization process of a steel structure. Oh, sorry, there's so many Chinese characters here. Uh, uh, and engineered wood and engineered bamboo. So let's first take a look at the steel, modern steel industry. Well, this is a process. Uh, first, you probably have a, a mining of uh, iron and oats, and then production of uh, pig iron 
and using glass, the furnace type of uh, those equipment. And then we do the refining and heating and combustion again to separate the, 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 the other comp components and also mix with other alloys to make steel. And then we go through a process to how the rolling process to how raw steel sheets. Then once the steel sheets are made, then we can transport them, pile them up the transport to the location of factories. Uh, at the factory, we cut the steel plates, weld them and drill them to make them as a, like, like a structural component like this, big girders, they, they are welded together. For engineered wood, of course, if at first the process we need to do foresting and the logging and then process the logs and do treatment and then manufacture the lumbers, standard lumber or plywood, etc. And, uh, and then pack them and the ship them. Then we use a cold lamination process to produce glue lamp. So this is glue lamp. For engineered bamboo, that I work the I work down, basically it's very similar to timber, uh, in the, and in, in conceptually similar to steel too. The first one we need to do nursing and do logging and uh, uh, prepare the uh, well the forest to make sure the forest is healthy. And then we process the round bamboo to produce the strips. Uh, then uh, we do some drying, uh, taking out the uh, some of the ingredients and also do combination, etc. Then we use a hot pressing process to produce uh, laminated bamboo board or plate. So typically we call it a plain bamboo. This plain bamboo can be piled and packed and the shipped the two uh, to the location of factory, which is similar to steel, uh, uh, steel mill, well not steel mill, steel fabricator, timber fabricator, uh, then here we have a bamboo uh, fabricator. So at this kind of a factory, which are uh, relatively close to the place where we want to build our structures, then we do the cold pressing to produce glue band, basically using a procedure very similar to produce glue lamp. So this is a, the, the direction I believe is a one, at least one of the direction for the bamboo, engineered bamboo to be used in the in, in, in industrialized uh, process or the future industrialization or mass industrialization might be following such kind of process. For glue bam, we typically use two types of original plain bamboo uh, through the hot uh, pressing process. One we call it a thin layer lamination uh, and the other one is thick layer lamination. In China, uh, the thin layer, uh, layer uh, laminated uh, uh, plant bamboo were originally typically used as uh, uh, forms for concrete. And this kind of thick layer lamination, uh, the, the board are typically used as uh, floorings. And those kind of bamboo floorings are also uh, very well available in the US recently. Uh, the, the difference is, uh, the thinner one is cheaper, the thicker one is a little bit more expensive because there's higher accuracy required. Well, once we have those board, we can cut them based on design, and then based on design, we laminate them into the size that we can use or based on design. For example, this case is a glue band column. And in here, we are pressing glue band girders. So once uh, those kind of uh, uh, industrialized process has been figured out, uh, we conducted uh, several important uh, research. Uh, we're still continuing our research from the material level to durability and also structure level. First uh, here, I would like to just give some quick update. Uh, one of the original research we did is to uh, try to come up with the footprint of glue band and also timber. Uh, at least we found as a material, uh, glue band and uh, glue lamp uh, plywood, they are all uh, carbon negative material comparing to aluminum, uh, cement, and the steel.
uh, then we conducted a tremendous amount of uh, uh, mature testing uh, because at the moment we don't have a code or standards so we basically follow the uh, testing standards for timber to to obtain the uh, material strengths and first of all we um, obtain the characteristic values and based on the characteristic values we referenced uh, different codes for example the chinese code the us lrfd code and the European EC code 5. And then based on the characteristic value, based on the concept of these codes, we come up uh, some of the typical divine values. So as shown here, they are fairly comparable for different codes. <clears throat> well, because the values are different a bit because of the, the loads uh, uh, regulated by different codes are having different values. So they divine uh, but, but essentially the safety factors are fairly similar. This gives another example of uh, uh, actually loaded the columns. Uh, these are the curves based on uh, the comparing with the test result based on the, uh, basically there's no any uh, safety factors in here, but once we put a different code, uh, specify the design strengths, so we have uh, uh, fairly reasonable margin of safety comparing the test results. Uh, we also conducted some uh, creep testing and uh, the papers are published uh, several years ago. I'd like to, uh, because I think I used that for some time, uh, I'd like to uh, be quick. Uh, this is the test by uh, my students and now my colleague, uh, Dr. Li Zhi. Uh, while doing the shear wall testing, light gate, lightweight uh, frame shear wall, similar to lightweight frame, wood frame, uh, widely used in North America. <clears throat> we also conducted some uh, guarded thermal uh, uh, hot box testing to look at the thermal conductivity uh, with one of my colleagues, Dr. Uh, Christopher DiMartino. Uh, we conducted uh, such tests. Uh, our paper published in uh, Building and Energy uh, several years ago. Uh, we also conducted uh, the calculation and also test result of R value and the U values. Um, they got our paper uh, list here. Uh, some of the interesting tests we did is uh, to burn the houses inside and also some of the uh, fatigue testing uh, we did shown here. Uh, these are our publications, uh, uh, well, uh, I think the numbers are still growing. Uh, very fortunate to be a university professor uh, that working in a, a, a fairly interesting field. I feel lucky for that. Uh, recently, we are focusing more on hybrid uh, glue band systems, including light gauge, the steel frame and the uh, plate, uh, plate bamboo. And the, this is a, a very recent uh, uh, building we uh, constructed, a three-dimensional truss uh, with a, a glue band as a weather member and the upper cord and the lower cord were uh, used as a, for uh, the steel pipes are used. And these are glue band with a concrete uh, composite uh, uh, system. So one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Shan Wu, was a uh, uh, in charge of that the project. Well, these are some of uh, our recent publications on hybrid systems. Some of our publications in Chinese and also in English, uh, that we uh, wrote a chapter for Dr. Uh, Harris and uh, Shama, edit, uh, a book edited by uh, both of them. These are some of our uh, demonstration projects, uh, including the uh, the, the buildings for this, uh, the, the earthquake relief buildings for Sichuan earthquake, uh, at some buildings uh, in, in Kenya on the campus where President Obama's father went to school. And this house where we constructed uh, together with the uh, Inbar, and uh, it's, uh, at, it's in the uh, Black Bamboo Park in Beijing. They hit, it's already I'd like to say, uh, 10 years old. Uh, we're currently also combining the beam model uh, with uh, uh, 
program uh, structures are trying to uh, integrate them into the BIM system. Uh, when we use that concept, we recently also completed a uh, uh, recycling uh, building, something like this. Uh, next, I'd like to move on quickly to this next subject, the development uh, uh, cross-laminated uh, bamboo and the timber, I call it the CLBT. Uh, this is uh, the CLT is a cross-laminated uh, timber originally uh, in the 1980s developed uh, in Germany and Austria. Uh, so this paper gave a fairly detailed uh, review of the original history. So basically it's a mass lumber uh, cross-arranged uh, and laminated together. Uh, then we have this uh, plate type of uh, walls and uh, uh, floors to build uh, uh, structures. And uh, this is a testing uh, done by Pro uh, Professor Pei uh, at the largest uh, shake table in, in Japan. That's a seven story building. Uh, I think this is uh, with the Italian company. And uh, currently uh, there's a great development of using this kind of system to build a high rise uh, timber buildings. Uh, this is some of the uh, previous example. So our motivation to develop a CLBT is first inspired by the research and the applications, applications of CLT in Europe and elsewhere. Uh, and the availability of bamboo in China to com also combine with the fast growing wood species. Uh, those fast growing mainly the forest are also very well available uh, this is in China. So basically it's a similar to CLT, uh, except that we put uh, uh, maybe one layer glue bam on the surface of the CL, uh, CLT uh, top layer. But certainly we can also hide the uh, bamboo layer inside the CLT. Okay. Uh, these are the trial uh, manufacturer, what we did. Uh, so it, it, it looks like this and two types of a surface of a glue band. This is a, a thick layer one, the previous one is a thin layer one. And this, we also tried the industrialized process with a, a, a company uh, operated by Dr. Wang, Wang Jianhe at, in, in Ningbo, uh, which will produce full side plates. Uh, we conducted a preliminary test, I'd like to just quickly go through it. Uh, the, we conducted the, the beam test uh, of uh, CLBT uh, on together uh, eight cases, four types of CLBT. Uh, basically, it's a thin layer or two types of uh, blue band, thin layer and thick layer, uh, two types of uh, timber. One is the SPF, then the other one is the poplar trees. So uh, four types and uh, two types of CL. Uh, uh, then the loading conditions uh, edge-wise or flat-wise. Uh, so these are some of the test results. But the other results are fairly uh, consistent and uh, reasonable. And we also compared the, the test result with the, the typical code. So we found out that they basically, uh, it, it, the, the capacity is slightly smaller than the cases we assume the uh, plain assumption. Uh, these are some of the results. Uh, it, it's too small. I will try to skip it. The paper is going to appear in AIC Journal of Structure Engineering. Uh, we also conducted uh, the column test with uh, Professor Fan at the Central South University of uh, Forest Technology. And so these are some of the, uh, the test results afterward. Uh, they, we compare the CLT and also CLBT. This, these are the failure patterns. These are stu the student of the test. Uh, recently, we also completed the uh, guarded the hot box test to uh, obtain the, the thermal panels. And uh, currently, those panels are used for testing sound uh, barriers. We are doing some sound testing. Uh, I think at the end, I'd like to quickly uh, give a concluding remarks. Uh, it's very unfortunate. Uh, fortunate. Uh, it's very fortunate that we have conducted the uh, research in Blue Band for about more than 15 years. And also, it's very fortunate that uh, 
we were able to work with the uh, Inbar and also many uh, distinguished scholars, friends throughout the world. And uh, we believe that there's potential merits, uh, tremendous merits of uh, com combinations of uh, the, uh, I think of the spelling, the resources of bamboo and the local wood species. Uh, there is also great uh, opportunities of research and applications of the new or uh, improved bio-based materials. So basically we can combine them with uh, bamboo. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, the, our campus of the Zhejiang University and the University of Illinois Joint Institute. And these are my uh, emails. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Zhao. Uh, excellent presentation. Um, I was remiss at the beginning. I should have mentioned that we are going to be taking questions at the end of the three, sure. um, the three speakers. And if you have questions, to please enter them in the chat um in the chat box and we will we will get those um uh we'll, we'll get those addressed at the end of the uh the three uh main presentations today um so fantastic thank you very much yes uh, thank you thank you professor Xiao, uh for sharing with us your insights and learnings from the 15-year studies on glue bam and other applications of bamboo as construction material and I have to I have to remind our participant to note that uh, um, you see that uh, Professor Xiao has spent so many years in, in, in researching in bamboo engineered materials, and he got uh, he got many supports uh, from uh, from the Chinese part and from also uh, the universities uh, many supports and uh, um, many donors, and uh, so uh, this make me think that. Uh, now bamboo's utilization as um, a construction material has become a world issue. And, um, and people, uh, people is, uh, is really serious in learning about bamboo's properties and, uh, and to, to stretch it to many different fields of utilization. So I think um, this shows that uh, no matter public and private or uh, research institutes, they, uh, they are joining this uh, this campaign, and uh, so uh, I, I think uh, I think uh, our participants need to. No, 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 if you are uh, if you are new to this field, please um, uh, please pay attention that uh, bamboo actually is a very important new material uh, for for the future, uh, as last time uh, Martin has mentioned, and so can you uh, you need to. Uh, have uh, you, you needed to consider it not similar to the traditional conventional materials like timber and steel or or uh, plastic. Uh, this uh, this is a new material and it has its own features and properties. That's why uh, Professor Xiao uh, at this age is still working on it, and uh, and uh, his sharing is very very valuable. Um, and uh, we are still very new to uh, about this material. We we don't know much about it, and so uh, this is uh, this is uh, uh, so. I want more people to join us in in the research and uh, uh, in the applications of bamboo as a construction material. That's what I want to want to say. So this is time for our next presenter. It's uh, Professor Li Yu of South China Agricultural University. Her presentation title is Research and Application of New Steel Bamboo Single Layer Retic uh, Reticulated Shell Structure System. She got a PhD degree of structural engineering from Hunan University. She engaged in the research of seismic resistance of composite structure, fabricated steel bamboo structure, isolation and energy dissipation structure. She won the Provincial and Ministerial Science and Technology Progress Awards and Provincial Survey and Design Awards for many times. She has presided over 10 vertical and horizontal projects and edit, uh, edited five standards and obtained nearly 30 national patent authorization. And she published more than uh, 30 scientific research papers home and abroad. And so, Professor Li, 
Okay. It is your floor now. Okay. Thanks to Inbars for giving me this opportunity. Research and applications of the new steel bamboo plastic composite in single loyal reticulating sharp structure system. The, the port is divided into five paths. First, introduction of new single loyal reticulating sharp structure system. Second, component test. Third, integrates analysis of new single neural reticulation sharp structure system. First, structure text. The last, conclusion. The actual project is the external support structure of a large commercial center performance installation. The outside of the bar shell is inlaid with a dense crystal lights to share the very interpretations commands, where the insights reflect the beauty of the structure of the board share. The structure of the building is required to easy assemble, easy to line, easy to get up close, light in weight, etc. Uh, let's watch the video. For this reason, we propose a new steel bamboo plastic composite single loyal reticulation sharp structure system. One point truth, sandy video, 3D video. The single loyal reticulation sharp structure system with the diamonds of seven meter is made of the five standard triangle element space. Each triangle element is composed of three main roads and 18 secondary roads. And the main roads between the triangle elements are connected to each other through the end board's steel nodes, where forming the reticulation shear. 1.3 member. Focus on the member. The section of the member is a square hollow tuber with the single snow. The snow and the hollow are designed for rounding wheels and the single lines to ensure the overall appearance. The member body is divided into two layers of materials. The outer plate is bamboo figure plus PVC plus modified, and the inner plate is AS engineering plastics. The member is formed by two layers of the material called extrusion through the moulds at high temperature. The combination of the bamboo and the plastic gives full place to their respective advantages and made up for their shortcomings and combines a new type of a structure member. This is the cold extrusion events. Watch the video. One point four bars material. The member is a new type of bamboo plastic composite material, which adopts eighteen to one hundred twenty bamboo fiber, PVC, and modified in ratio of two to one, and is formed by high temperature core extruding of the mold. The high strength and the light weight of the bamboo fiber made up for the weakness of the mechanical properties of PVC. At the same time, 
high growth capacity, enduring ability, and steel resistance of PVC also made up for the short shortage of moisture and micro austen of the bamboo fiber. Bamboo's practice composite material has the characteristic of easy abrosion, corrosion resistant, resistant to wet, and not easy to endure. 1.5 in June. After comparing varied node connection forms, the embedded connection is finally selected. The joint is composed of a ring plane, a copper plane, a large plane, and a bolt. The large plane is wedded to the ring plane at a certain distance and angle. The two large planes are fixed by bolts and the ring plane is folded as holes by wedding the upper and the lower cover plates. The nodes has a characteristic of a high strength, beautiful appearance, and easy stellation. Second, compact text. 2.1 bar text design. In order to study the mechanical properties of the components. Six sets of main bar text were completed. Three groups of extra compression text and three groups of bending text. The length of the main bar in, in extra compression text is about 216 mm, and the bending text is 2,000 mm. The section is full scale, and there is a production error of about 1.5%. One, one I'm sorry, uh, Professor Lee, and uh, participants said the sound is uh, rather low. Uh, could you adjust your sound to louder? Okay. It's already top. Maybe the Zoom sound, I don't know, is there a... And participants, if it's uh, too uh, low, you can turn louder your own, and then for the later one, you can turn turn it lower. Yes. Okay. Okay. Two point two, extra compression text. This is a picture of the loading and the failure site and the extra compression text. The three specialists all lost their barring capacities during to failure of the job in the middle extension that direction. The force and the display curves are shown in the figure. The maximum X pressure that means main can bears is about 17 to 75 km, and the corresponding respection distance is to 3 to 4 millimeter. 2.3 battering tax. This is the loading and the dynamic sense photos of the bending tax. Its standard bending moment display is covered is shown in the figure. When the bending moment each 1.8 kmn. The, uh, the corresponding display is 20 millimeter. At this point, the rolling angle of the medium spans greater practice. Third, the integrated analysis of a new single loyal reticulated shear structure system. Three point one state analysis. Meta's Jim and three D three S software was used to analyze elastic strand states of the new bamboo practice reticular shirts. The influence of the constrained degrees of the jaws on the mechanical properties of the whole structure is the key to the analysis of reticular shirts. 
node streams can be divided into three types, rich connection, 17% rich connection, and 13% rich connection. The analysis results and should in the table. The greatest degrees stiffness, smaller the deforms and the better the structure integrated. For safety consideration, the structure's adders 13% reach emerald de device. Points two, buckling analysis. Buckling analysis is the main step to judge the stability of a single layer reticular shapes. Analysis methods and the 3D 3S software were used for buckling analysis. According to the buckling analysis result of each software, when the structure members are reconnected and the load reach ten times the standard value. The shirt begins to buck. The buckling characteristic value of the structure decreases with the degrees of the rotation stiffness of the end of the row. That is stiffer, the nodes of the reticulate shirt, the less likely it is to buck. It can be seen from the low displays covered of the hold passes that the stability of the shirt is much greater than that of the similar rigid shirt. According to the result of the engine value buckling analysis of reticulate shear and the hold press analysis, considering the geometrical non-line energies, the engine value and the critical loads are both 4.2 times higher than the load standard value. So the special structure of the SWPC reticulation is stable. 3.3 Note Strength Analysis. For special and reticulation sh shares, the force on the nodes are most complex and important. Abacus software is used to similar strength state nodes. The maximum strength is consented at the end of most opening as the connection between the leg plane and the ring plane. The maximum strength is true night A. 0.2 MPA less to the year chance steer, 355 MPA. The joint is under reliable strain. The first structure text. Finally, the local structure with the most complex force are selected to carry out structure text. On the one hand, through the manufacture and the stimulation of local structure, the real dissemination of the structure construction sites to seek sustainability, stimulation experience, and the skills. On the other hand, the space limited index of the single loyal reticular sharp structure are taxed to find out the space failures mode of the structure. Watch the video. Last conclusion. Through the above analysis and the text during the following conclusion. One, comparing the design of venue with the text of venue, the structure is feasible. Compression strength text value is 20 MPA. Balance strength text value is 22 MPA. Design venue is less of the less than text venue. The structure is feasible. Two, the steel bamboo plastic composite 
as BPC provide new ways to think for structured material. Three, its new single laurel reticulating sharp structure system provides reference for similar projects in the design, analysis, production, fabrication, and installation. Okay, report finished. Thanks for your listening. All right, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And again, I would encourage everybody with questions. We're starting to see some questions come in. Uh, put any questions that, that you have in the chat box. I would also ask that if you are not speaking to please mute your microphone. We're getting a little bit of feedback. At least I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Um, all right, I'd like to, in the interest of time, we still have a, 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 a long session ahead of us. I would like to um, move on to our third speaker. Our third speaker, uh, Mateo Gutierrez Gonzalez. The, the topic is the structural response of bamboo during and after fire. So uh, uh, pardon the pun, but a hot topic. Sorry, Mateo, I had to... Um, uh, Matteo is the technical development manager of CLTP in Tasmania, and he is about to complete his PhD in civil engineering at the University of Queensland in Australia. And on a personal note, I'm very proud to be a member of his review committee, and he's doing very well, and you'll be fine. Um, oh, now I've lost. Uh, and, and of course, his, his doctoral work is on the fire performance of bamboo structures. He completed his, his bachelor's um, and master's degree in, in civil and structural engineering at the, uh, the National University of Columbia in Bogota. And his main research interests are in mechanical properties, fire performance, and structural design of timber and bamboo. Um, for over a decade, he's been working on the mechanical and physical properties of bamboo as a load-bearing material. He's a founding member of Sibguadua, of the Sibguadua Research um, Network um, and contributes to the organization of the International Symposium on Bamboo and Guadua. Um, he's a member of the Bamboo Construction Task Force um, and is also uh, the nominated expert for Standards Australia to the ISO Technical Committee 165 uh, for timber structures. So with that, Matteo, if you can share your Thanks. screen. Thanks, Kent. Uh, can you hear me there? Yes. Perfect, thanks so much. Uh, thanks for the introduction and thanks to all the organizers of this um, seminar. So, as Kent, uh, as Kent just mentioned, uh, the topic of my presentation is the structural performance of bamboo during and after fire, and um, and this is uh, this presentation is part of the research that I conducted during my uh, PhD, uh, which, uh, as Kent mentioned, I just uh, completed uh, in the last month. So so yeah, thanks thanks Kent for all your your help. Uh, as well in, in this matter. Um, so good morning to everyone in the Western Hemisphere and a good evening, good night for everyone in uh, Asia and also here in Australia. And it's uh, almost 1 a.m. here in Tasmania. So uh, uh, please forgive me if I'm falling asleep, uh, but I will try to do my best uh, effort to keep uh, awake. Um, so as you already know, um, so we have been using bamboo uh, for many, many years, but most of the use in brown bamboo uh, has been done in low rise construction, where obviously fire is not a big deal because we can quickly evacuate uh, the buildings. 
We have also used bamboo, as we already saw from uh, Professor Shao presentation, uh, in engineered bamboo products, uh, such as laminated bamboo. Um, and with the, with the use of laminated bamboo, we have now the potential of using bamboo in mid-rise construction um, or even in high-rise construction. So is which is when fire can become a big problem. Um, I wanted to bring this slide because as some of you know, uh, there was a big fire in February of this year where um, the factory of um, one of the main bamboo producers in the world um, got burned. Uh, the structure wasn't, wasn't done in bamboo, but um, I just wanted to highlight that bamboo is a combustible material and, and there is always that risk of um, having a big fires when we have exposed bamboo. Um, but we have also seen several uh, fires in other raw bamboo constructions. Um, like this picture that you can see here, this is an instructor in Mexico um, where there wasn't a, a big fire with flashover or, or things that Com um, compromise the, the structural stability, uh, but it was mainly uh, fire propagation over the, the roof. Uh, but there is always a potential for having a fire in a, in a bamboo structure. So, um, but unfortunately we have a quite poor understanding on how bamboo structures perform during a fire. Um, and we know that there is a growing interest of using bamboo. Uh, there is a potential for using bamboo in mid-rise construction. Um, and obviously we require a lot of research in, in order to understand, uh, to better understand this problem. So, because we wanna use bamboo with the same confidence that we use other conventional materials uh, such as concrete or steel. And so, that's what we require a new design framework. That's what we require um, like all the tools to perform um, um, or to um, create performance-based design uh, solutions. So basically what we uh, propose in this uh, methodology um, or to tackle this uh, issue was to uh, first um, having a better understanding at, at the material level on how bamboo performs at elevated temperature. So we basically focus on understanding the reduction of the compressive strength of bamboo, the reduction in the tensile strength, the reduction of the modulus of elasticity. We look at the failure modes and then we create some constitutive models at elevated temperatures. With those um, models and after understanding the properties um, of, of bamboo at elevated temperatures, then we decided to perform some mid-scale tests in uh, laminated bamboo beams exposed to fire. And then um, we developed some uh, numerical models to predict the performance of these uh, um, elements under fire conditions. So that's basically what I would like to show you. First of all, focus on the material, then we will talk about um, elements. And finally, I will give you a, a brief um, presentation about the, the models that we developed to predict the performance of, of bamboo. Um, so we, start, we started testing um, raw bamboo because that was initially our main interest. Um, so we uh, performed some compressive strength tests on raw bamboo samples. In, within, uh, we tested in an environmental chamber. Um, we follow the, obviously the ISO standards for uh, conducting tests on bamboo. And, and we look at the, the different performance of bamboo. So if you look at this curb here, this is normally the stress strain curb for bamboo in compression. And what you can see here is that once you start increasing the temperature, we have um, lower, strength, but slightly higher um, uh, deformations. So like basically we reduce the strength, but we start gaining a little bit of ductility. Um, we observe different failure modes and we move from having like a, um, 
like a characteristic failure mode to uh, localize failure, like a local buckling in the wall thickness. And then we created these graphs to look at the reduction of the compressive strength of bamboo. Um, after testing these raw bamboo samples, we realized, so as you can see from the previous uh, graph, sorry, you can see that at 100 degrees, we almost lost 70% uh, of the strength of bamboo. And, and that really um, raised some concern because 100 degrees is a very low temperature in, in a fire condition. So we thought that it was worth to test uh, laminated products because they had the uh, capacity to resist um, longer fires and, and that will have all, that can create also some charring that will protect the, the inner part of the material. So after testing this raw bamboo, we decided that it was a good idea to test laminated bamboo products. So that's when we start focusing our research on laminated bamboo. So we basically repeat the same testing conditions. We try two different materials. We also follow not only the bamboo standard, but um, the European standard on laminated timber products. And, um, and then we tested, um, we observed the uh, reduction on the uh, compressive strength. We look at the uh, variation in the stress strain curves, and we also observe uh, changes on the failure mechanism of bamboo. We obtain the um, reduction factors uh, at elevated temperature, and then we study some equations um, to, to predict the performance of the material. Um, then we conduct the test um, to understand the tensile strength. Instead of using an environmental chamber, we ended up using a heating blanket. Um, we knew that our samples were going to fail in the in the midpoint, um, uh, basically where the knot is located. So we heat up that area, and then we look at the reduction of the tensile strength and look at the failure modes. Um, we again we describe the reduction in the tensile strength as well. Uh, we obtain some equations. We when we were testing. Um, laminated bamboo in compression and tension. We also look at the reduction of the modulus of elasticity. We use strain gauges and we establish some correlations between um, strain gauges and the, the, the formation of the, uh, or the displacement of the crosshead um, to obtain the, the reduction in the modulus of elasticity. Um, and then we compare the results um, at the bench scale level, like at, at this medium scale level against um, results from DMA tests, like DMA is, stands for the dynamic mechanical analysis, which is a very small scale test, but that can give us like a really good understanding on the reduction of the modulus of elasticity. Um, and what we observe from this test is that actually between 220 and 250 degrees, we basically lost um, all the strength and, and stiffness of bamboo, which is which was a quite interesting result as well. Because well, normally for timber, you assume that the um, the strain is completely lost at 300 degrees, but for bamboo, it seems to be a slightly um, lower temperature. So basically, after we conducted all this research on the reduction of the mechanical properties, um, we established some equations, um, and then we created some constitutive models to describe the behavior of bamboo in compression and in tension and elevated temperature. So basically, after having this good understanding of the material behavior, then we moved to test uh, uh, elements at a mid scale, right? So basically we wanted to do a um, uh, four point bending test in a simply supported beam. Uh, and basically we wanted to burn the, the central third of our beam, right? So doing fire test uh, is, not a, is not an easy task. Uh, it, it requires um, normally like a fire lab, uh, an extraction hood, to, to handle the, the, the smoke production and to also be able to say to do a safe 
uh, test because when you have fire, things can get um, uh, under control, uh, like out of control, sorry. And, um, and, and we have to be very careful when testing during fire. Um, so in order to conduct this test, basically we turn around the beam and in a, in instead of testing the beam um, downwards, we test it upwards, like to, to apply in the load uh, upwards direction, right? Um, and then we apply the, the heat, uh, a constant incident heat flux with a, with a radiant panel. Um, but before doing any fire test, we conducted some tests at ambient temperature to determine the capacity of our beams at ambient temperature. So basically we found that for these beams of this size, the failure load was around um, 15, 15 kilonewtons. Um, and then we say, okay, um, in order to test the beams uh, with fire exposure, if the failure load was 15 kilonewtons, let's do some tests at eight kilonewton, at a six kilonewton and a four kilonewton, which will be equivalent to a 54% of the failure load, 40% of the failure load and 27% of the failure load. All the beams were exposed to, um, again, constant uh, incident heat flux of 60 kilowatts per square meter. And basically what we were doing was to load the beam until we reach the target load. And then we start burning the beam until reaching the failure. So here you can see a video of one of those tests. So again, we start loading the beam until we reach um, the target load, let's say eight kilonewtons. Um, then we define the distance between the beam and the radiant panels. Um, as you can see here, we are measuring deflections with string pods. We have strain gauges connected at the back of the sample, but we also have this area here that we mark it with a speckled pattern that will allow us to uh, measure deflections and strain with, uh, with a DIC, which is a digital image correlation system. So basically after these radiant panels, we're applying an incident heat flux, we start burning the beam and the beam start having more and more deflections until it finally reach um, the failure, right? So if you look at this video here, you will see that um, Again, this is a digital image correlation analysis where you will see the deflections in the, in the central third of the beam. So here you have displacement against time, right? So what you will see here is that we loaded the beam until we reach the target load. Then we start applying the fire exposure. Once you have the fire, the beam starts having more and more and more deflections until it finally reached the failure, right? But we, um, and, and basically thanks to the uh, use of this DIC or digital image correlation, we obtain the deflections against time of exposure for all our beams. These were the beams tested at eight kilonewtons. These were the beams tested at six kilonewtons and these were the beams tested at four kilonewtons. And then we also obtain the, the reduction in the in the load bearing capacity against time time of exposure, um, but we not only measure the deflection but we also measure strain, which is a, a quite difficult um, properties to be measured in a fire test because of the smoke production because of the uh, conditions of the fire testing. But thanks to the use of DIC, we were able to measure strain against again again against time, but also against load. Um, so again, same process. Um, we start loading the beam. We have compressions at the bottom, tensions at the top. Um, we were uh, loading the beam until the target load was reached. Then we start burning the beam, and once you start burning the beam, you have more um, strain in the tensile side, more strain in the compressive side. This was the strain at the neutral axis. And you can see some um, displacement of the neutral axis. And then until basically you, you keep burning the beam until you reach the failure. 
So here you will see some uh, results of the strain profiles. So basically you can see the strain profiles at different, at different times, right? Reaching the failure. And because as, as I mentioned before, we created these constitutive models for different temperatures. So we needed, we needed to know the temperature distribution in the cross section. So in order to do that, we uh, installed thermocouples at different depths. And with those thermocouples, we were able to measure the temperature distribution within the beam. This is something that can be done with a, with a numerical model, but in order to reduce the, the uncertainties uh, in our calculations, basically in our structural calculations, uh, we just decided to do this uh, from, from an experimental uh, setup. So how was, how was the analysis or what, what were the basis of the numerical model? So basically it was a section analysis, um, same thing that you can do at ambient temperatures if you have, uh, and if you apply beam theory, so you have a, a cross section that you can divide in, in different um, slices. And then obviously you have the strain distribution. If you know the mechanical properties of each slice, then you can obtain the internal forces and the internal stresses in the cross section. And with the summation of the forces, then you can obtain the internal uh, bending moment, right? The issue here is that we had fa a fire so because of the fire, we created a temperature profile. And, and if each of these slices is subjected to a different temperature, then we can assume that each slice will have a different mechanical property as we have uh, already uh, observed from the results that I showed before. So basically the model uh, at elevated temperature is that we have our cross section, we have a temperature profile and at each time step, we will have a different temperature in each slice, right? We apply again, same beam theory, but using the constitutive models that we created, we will be able to obtain the mechanical properties at each slice, at each time step. And then we can obtain the, the we can do the equilibrium, uh, do the summation of forces and obtain the bending moment capacity at each time step. Um, um, and, and this is basically what we did. We uh, reproduced this, uh, this model. So what you can see here in grayscale is the strain profiles in the beam and the red uh, dashed line will show the model that is predicting the behavior. So as you can see here at ambient temperature, this is time zero of exposure, the, the model basically matches the, the performance perfectly. Then after five minutes of exposure, it still represents pretty well the, the behavior of the beam and so on. So you, you, you can see here the, the, the results of 10 minutes, again, experimental results against the model, 15 minutes and 20 minutes, basically until reaching the failure. So with this model, we were able to predict the strain profiles um, at all different times of exposure, and, and we were able to predict the capacity. So this is quite an uh, interesting graph because if you use um, the reduced cross-section method, which is the traditional method that you normally use in timber to calculate the um, capacity of uh, timber elements exposed to fire, when, when you normally assume a charring rate, here you will see the reduction in the bending moment capacity against time. Uh, here in the purple uh, dots will show the experimental results. So you can see that the experimental results are actually quite far away. And, and, the, and this reduced cross-section method using standard charming rates and, standard, and charming rates obtained from bamboo test over predict the capacity of the bamboo beams. However, the dashed line is the model that we created. And you can see that the model actually um, matches pretty well with the, with the experimental results and, and it's able to um, predict the performance of the beam. So in conclusion, um, we, we did, um, during this research, we did a, a very comprehensive 
characterization of bamboo at elevator temperatures. We created some constitutive models that will help us to um, predict the performance of bamboo, um, of, of load bearing bamboo members under fire. Um, these results demonstrates that stress and strain profiles can be predicted um, through, the through the analysis of in-depth temperatures and the reduction in the, in the mechanical properties. Um, we develop a new experimental setup that allow us to um, measure with very good detail um, the performance of, of bamboo. And, um, and finally, well, this research, um, I hope that this research will establish the, the foundation for designing uh, fire safe uh, bamboo structures and that can really contribute to the development of the bamboo construction industry for, for mid rise and, and high rise uh, constructions. So again, um, you can download my uh, PhD thesis um, in the, in the, uh, the university website, in the, the university repository. So title of, of the thesis is Fire Analysis of Load Bearing Bamboo Structures. Um, so please, um, you're more than welcome to look at that uh, if you wanna know more details uh, about this research and, and if you wanna know more about uh, fire performance of, of bamboo. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you, thank you for your attention. And I'm, I'm very glad to see too many participants and I'm happy to take uh, any questions at the end of the, of the, the session. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Matteo. <laughs> thank you very much for the valuable sharing. Um, no it was, uh, I think I noted it was very rare in Imbas history that uh, we look so closely into the fire issues of the bamboo structure and share the information and data in such um, detail uh, uh, globally. Uh, I, I think- uh, um, My pleasure. Yeah, I, I, I guess our participants must have bunches of questions for you. Um, but I, I, I think for some of, uh, of, of them mistakenly think your name is Marisho, so it should be Matteo, so I'm correcting it here. Yeah, Kent, I think, Kent, uh, did we get many questions? <laughs> yeah, th thank you. Um, so I, how long do we have for the questions? Because I know we have a couple more presentations to close out. Yeah, uh, we, we still have Edwin. And so, uh, how, how long do we have for the questions? Maybe maybe half an hour. Uh, okay. Until eleven. Until eleven. Oh, until eleven. Yes. Then. yes. Or, okay, ten o'clock. Perfect. Thank mm. you. So about forty minutes. All right. So so I do have a lot of questions that have come through. So I would ask each of the speakers to 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 be reasonably concise. Um, and I'm going to try to pull a couple questions together in each case. So I'm going to uh, start going back with Professor Zhao. We'll, we'll start at the beginning. And there were a number of questions, um, <clears throat> uh, 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 a couple of the people who asked these, Carlos Castilla in Serra from Costa Rica, Ray Villanueva from the Philippines, and Vanessa Hoyos, um, I believe from Peru, I'm not certain, um, all asked about species. And, and particularly, I'm assuming that you were probably using MOSO for the most part. Um, are some species better than others? What do you feel about guadua was one of the, the questions that came in um, sort of related to this. And similarly, have you any experience or do you plan any experience, particularly um, the, the question was regarding Peru, but species that might be available uh, in uh, Central or South America? Well, th <clears throat> thank you, Kent. And also thank you for uh, thank all those uh, uh, the gentlemen of the, the participants who raised the questions, I, I did also uh, briefly look at them. Uh, as well, you 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 already answered part of the questions. Uh, we 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 did use the muscle too, so muscle was, and uh, I I uh, I we we could not have the opportunity to study other uh, bamboos, but I believe there is a, a potential, and also. I, I know, I, I actually envy our colleagues in Colombia uh, that you have a, a very big uh, guado bamboo and I believe the guado bamboo can also work uh, well. And uh, some of the research done by our friends uh, uh, like Francisco, uh, you know, Juan, Frans, uh, Juan 
Cow Reel, and uh, uh, I forgot that the the uh, all of a sudden the name doesn't come out. Uh, Takeuchi and other uh, uh, researchers, I think, uh, some of their research on laminated bamboo are quite similar uh, to the system we call glue band. Uh, what we did, uh, the, uh, I, I, I did read some of their data in some of their papers. Uh, uh, the laminated bamboo using guada actually had a little bit higher strength. So I think uh, uh, that may be uh, showing uh, the different species may have a different performance. Uh, but certainly uh, bamboo is uh, similar to other materials, uh, just like a concrete. And uh, uh, if you want to make some structures, I think locally available bamboo is the only way you know, we need to do. Uh, I think it w I would be more than happy to work with the uh, INBAR and uh, that we, uh, we we study some of the different uh, species like the from uh, Peru or others. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, oh, there, there she is, Professor Lee. Um, again, we have a couple of very much related questions uh, from Cho Cho Win in, in Myanmar, uh, Mateo and uh, Alili Arafal from the UAE and the Philippine Institute of, of Architects. And these questions are all are somewhat related. Um, so what kinds of synthetic resins uh, were you using to combine the bamboo fibers? Um, and can you elaborate a little bit on the difference between this composite and other uh, EPBs like bamboo scrimber and 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 strand or and or strand woven bamboo, um, and and related related to that, can we use then recycled plastic uh, potentially in in this system as well? And I think those are all related uh, to the materials and particularly to the resin. Okay. During these lower strengths of dense steers, the bamboo's plastic composite material can only be applied to the external support structure, maintain structure, or the underlying structure system with a little uh, external know. Uh, its, its section's edible abilities, flex burst to common extrusions, heritage, morphous extrusions has massive requirements of the building. Okay, thank you. I think we'll come back to that one. Um, okay, we'll move on. Uh, move, move on to Matteo. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just taking a look here. And and I, I sorry, I'm just trying. I was trying to pull two of these together, but um, um, so I will. Um, uh, so from, um, I'm not certain if that's uh, or probably uh, Jamie or Jaime from bambusapenosa.com. Um, you did compressive strength tests in, in the presence of, of, of elevated temperature in the presence of fire. Um, but how long, how long was the exposure during that test? Was it simply, I suppose, during the test or, or, um, or, or uh, was, it, was it longer than the test? Um, and then, um, excuse me, similarly, uh, and, and related to the compressive strength, uh, this is from, from, from David Trujillo. <clears throat> um, we know that the compressive strength degrades relatively quickly. The elastic modulus, on the other hand, doesn't. Um, and, and how might this impact uh, the, the behavior of structures, and particularly maybe column or, or, or compressive load-bearing structures? Right. Um, so the qu first question it's it's about the the compressive strength test. Um, basically, uh, what we need to conduct those tests is that we heat up the material until we reach a steady state uh, condition, which is basically um, that the temperature in the whole cross section was exactly the same. So basically, to reach different temperatures, we had to heat up those samples for different times, but we were also, we also established some correlations between the surface temperature of the sample and the internal temperature of the sample. Um, so in order to achieve that steady state condition, uh, but just for uh, 
the sake of giving you a number, um, we ended up heating those samples up for 30 to 40 minutes to reach a steady state until we reach a steady state. Otherwise, you're always going to have a big temperature gradient before reaching uh, that condition. But again, remember that those tests were conducted at temperatures below 250 degrees, right? Uh, when there was obviously no fire. It, it is, you, you, you can see pyrolysis because uh, after uh, 150 degrees, you start pyrolyzing the bamboo, but you are not uh, having any flames or, or any fire. Um, for the uh, question of the, uh, the question from David Trujillo, um, it, is, it is different when you have fire and when you are just heating up the sample. So you see that loss of uh, strength and, and, and modulus of elasticity or stiffness when you are heating up the sample. But if you have a fire, right, um, the, the behavior is a little bit different because when you have a fire, you're burning normally one side of the sample and then you start creating some eccentricity and then you ended up having like a, a buckling failure because of the eccentricity created on the side that you're burning the, the material. So, well, yeah, I mean, you, you, every, every time that you heat up bamboo, you will lose strength you will lose modulus of elasticity. So if your sample is more likely to buckle because of the reduction in the, in the stiffness, right? Um, so yeah, I don't know if that uh, helps to, to answer the question. I think so. I'd like to go back to, uh, I'm, I'm kind of gonna go back through all the presenters to, to give everybody an opportunity here. Um, back to Professor Zhao. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and, and again, sort of related here, uh, a question from uh, somebody who's going by the name of Bamboo Boar, which I'm assuming is somewhere in the Netherlands or, or something like that. Um, and Alili Arafal again. Um, question of how does, how does the bamboo uh, CLTB, uh, CLTB products compare with other CLTP products and, and primarily from a financial perspective? And then of course, related to that is um, among the materials that you're looking at, glue BAM, hybrid, CLBT, which, which would be preferable or, or are, there, are there niches that some work and some don't? Well, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Uh, uh, the, the second question is, uh, first, uh, is the, uh, the, the, the hybrid system, the, uh, are they, I, I think different uh, structural forms or different systems, uh, uh, are suitable or maybe suitable individually for different systems. Uh, our, I think the, uh, in general, uh, all the systems are hybrid. So that, that's good because all the system, uh, like, like timber structure, we do use a steel uh, for, for connections. So that's the case. Uh, the 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 CLBT what we investigated uh, we do have a target trying to make it for uh, tall buildings multi-story tall buildings uh, just uh, hopefully uh, similarly like what we, uh, what has been done in the CLT uh, uh, for the <laughs> financial part I think it's a great question and the down uh, down the road and if it's Financially, doesn't work as it, it certainly does not make sense. Uh, I believe at the moment, uh, in well, at least the, on the Chinese market, in the Chinese market, the glue ban uh, can be uh, roughly about made, made, can be rough, roughly produced in uh, approximately similar prices as the CL, no, no, the glue lab. Uh, because in China, many cases of the timbers are imported, and uh, so I think the cost might be higher. Uh, the current, currently, I think that's the situation. The for CLBT in future, my hope is that it can combine with the uh, fast-growing uh, timber species. That that is um, 
uh, that are very well available in China nowadays, and the, the prices are re relatively cheap. So I, I, I think that's my answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, so I think a related question then um, to Professor Lee is what are, uh, and again, this is from Abel, and I apologize, I'm probably not gonna do a good job with this name. Olo Runasola from the University of Ibadan. Um, what are the, the, the practical uses of the bamboo plastic composites in construction and what are their advantages over other composites? That's for Professor Lee. Okay, I have, no, Professor Lee, I cannot hear you at all. Is your microphone on? I, I still have no audio at all. Okay. Um, no. Okay, then we'll, we'll move on. Maybe uh, Wei Jin, we could uh, we could do a chat back and to get a couple of responses. You've got the questions there. Uh, for Dr. Lee, because apparently her microphone is is no longer working. Yeah, I, I apologize to the to the other participant or to all the participants that we we can't get uh, Professor Lee on here. <coughs> okay. Um, uh, so excuse me. Uh, so so I want to take a big uh, a bigger picture, and this this is actually a question that probably should go to all three, but uh, certainly to to. Uh, um, uh, to, to Yan and Mateo. Um, and this, this came from a number of sources and a couple of different questions uh, through the course. Um, there, there's still some skeptical, uh, uh, so, some doubt about the durability potentially of bamboo in, in a fire um, in a fire scenario. And so related to this, what type of, of, of uh, uh, mitigation is, is necessary in terms of bamboo structures? Um, and, and then, so maybe we'll go to Matteo with that. And then I'd like to follow up with, uh, Dr. Zhao on, uh, on that as well in particular, and maybe Matteo wants to address this as well. How do you address this concern with clients or with building officials, um, uh, in, in terms of the, the concerns with fire? And I'm sure most of us who are involved in construction are aware of the issues that we have with building officials. So Matteo, maybe we can, uh, if you could start that off and then I'll, I'll, I'll go to uh, Professor Zhao. Well, I think that to answer that question, we can um, bring um, the context of the way that timber structures uh, have, are being designed nowadays. Um, the, the current um, design frameworks require structures to achieve a certain fire resistance levels, right? Which is a very prescriptive um, approach. You have a, an instructor that needs to uh, perform for an hour and a half or two hours. So basically there is a standard test, uh, an ISO standard <laughs> test or some uh, uh, countries have their own regulations. Um, and, and basically the beams or the load bearing members are tested to perform for such a uh, period of time, right? Um, however, in, for high-rise construction, it's been already demonstrated that the standard test is not representative of a real fire scenario. And if we wanna use combustible materials, we need to have different approaches. So what you can do uh, in that case is to, um, with, for example, methodologies such as the one that I just presented, you can calculate what could be the fire resistance of a load bearing member. You can uh, calculate what are the actual loads um, for which the building 
should be designed to, and then you can establish what would be the resistance of your member for that particular scenario. Um, you need to be aware that bamboo is combustible and it will burn. You can apply fire retardants, uh, but the fire retardants will not uh, prevent the member to ignite. Um, so you can either protect your member, you can protect it with a non-combustible material, but if you want to have bamboo exposed, you, you need to know that the bamboo will burn and it not only burn, but it will contribute with fuel to the fire, which will create a different mechanism as well. But yeah, that, that will be more or less my, my approach. Uh, Professor Zhao, do you want to add to that, and, and particularly maybe with with an emphasis on on how to deal, or or it, it, any experience that you've had with with clients addressing this issue? I mean, usually the client's going to ask you, um, "Does it burn, and how do I stop it from burning?" Yeah, well, thanks, uh, uh, Andrew. There are two quite the durability and uh, the fires uh, are the two uh, most frequently asked uh, questions. Uh, uh, I have several short answers. Uh, first answer is we need more research. Uh, second answer, short answer is uh, we need to uh, probably borrow the knowledge from uh, timber uh, uh, industry, the approaches by timber. Uh, for durability, we did some previous research. Uh, they, uh, we found out that as long as, they, uh, as, long as we prevent the uh, the, the wet and the dry situation for the material, and it, it actually works quite well. Uh, we do have some uh, uh, structural components that have been uh, built for some structures uh, that has been exposed to the, the air, but not to the rain that has experienced for almost like 10 years, we, we do not see any decay. Well, that, that's a certain, uh, but uh, also we, we also did some uh, accelerated uh, wet and the dry test. I think that uh, the wet and the dry cycle is probably the most uh, uh, difficult uh, or uh, the uh, serious uh, uh, loading in the condition for the fact. But I think it's also similar for timber too. Uh, for fire, I think much uh, uh, of actually explains quite well. And uh, for our case, when we built some structures before, like the one that we built with the uh, in-bar uh, for the interior, we did use uh, the uh, gypsum boards uh, to prevent the fire, uh, to shut down the fire. So I think those are the narrow. I, uh, another observation we always have, I think the usage of bamboo it's more acceptable in, uh, uh, surprisingly, in the US or Europe. I think one of the reasons is because the people are more used to timber, uh, timber structures and uh, they consider timber and bamboo are similar. Uh, well, in China, the, the general uh, public, public, the public uh, they, they do have a higher suspicion about the, because in China, people are not used to uh, living in the timber structure for many, many years already. Well, although they traditionally, historically, uh, China has many timber buildings, but in the last, uh, I would say, 70 years, uh, they, we, we didn't have too many uh, timber structures or red, residential buildings. So I think that the uh, conception of the, <laughs> the general public is also uh, different. We, we, well, the conclusion is <laughs> we probably need to do more research and also uh, education to the general pub, uh, public. Thank you. Do we have Dr. Lee back or do we still not have a, a audio? <laughs> no, we, we don't seem to have your audio. I, 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 no. I see your lips moving, but I can't hear you. <laughs> No. Uh, my, apo my apologies then. Um, so I'm actually going to, a uh, uh, question came in as, we, as, as you guys are responding to that, which I think is related. And I'm not certain, um, this is to Mateo, and I'm not certain if you were able to answer this or not. 
uh, but this is related to, um, of course, the Madrid airport and is the largest interior use of, of bamboo so far, um, about 230,000 square meters apparently. Um, and of course, this is a, a, a public space, uh, in, in which case fire, uh, fire resistance is, 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 is uh, very, very important. And apparently um, this has, and I'm not familiar with the terminology, but M1 fire resistance or fire retardant um, for, for public space. Are you aware of, or can you comment on the process that was used for that bamboo? Admittedly, it's non-structural, but uh, certainly relevant. Yeah, um, I'm not I'm not familiar with the process. Uh, I'm not familiar of the ratings uh, that that structure achieved, but I 100% I, uh, agree with your comment. Uh, it's not a structural uh, material. It's it's just a ceiling. So you can have um, exposed bamboo as you can have exposed timber when it is not structural, you need to be aware of the flammability, right? Because you can have flame spread and the, that combustible material can contribute um, to, the, to the fuel load uh, in your compartments. But, um, but at the end, you don't compromise the stability of the structure with that material, right? So, um, yeah, we need to be very careful in establishing the difference because we are currently using a lot of laminated bamboo, but all that laminated bamboo is not is not used as structural material. is 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 used as a as a finishing product, and and it's they you have two completely different time um, um, time domains when you have a fire at the beginning of your fire uh, you need to evacuate people you need to guarantee life safety and that's when your fire starts growing and 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 that's when the non-structural products are relevant but after you have developed the fire and then you need to guarantee structural stability that's when the structure actually should perform during a fire scenario so yeah it, it is it is a bit of a difference there Okay, thank you. And, and actually, I'm, I'm going to do a follow on for, for Mateo, uh, sort of based on this. This is a question from Jorge Augusto. Um, and, but it's also a question I know I've raised with you as well, is the impact of the glue itself in, in laminated products. Uh, obviously, it's potentially another flammable piece of the puzzle, or it could potentially be a mitigating piece of the uh, of material as well, mitigating some of the effects of fire. Can you comment on that? Uh, and, the, and the question in particular um, is what's the incidence of fire and, and, and the glue, how is glue used to reduce the impact, I suppose? And that was the, the nature so, of the question. So this is something that it's been more, uh, has been more investigated in timber particularly uh, because you see that some glues perform better at elevated temperatures than, than other glues. Um, let's say uh, polyurethane is the most commonly used uh, glue in glue laminated timber uh, and in CLT particularly, but polyurethane doesn't perform really well at elevated temperatures. Whereas bamboo products, particularly the laminated bamboo that I tested was made uh, with the um, phenol resourcing old formaldehyde and, and phenol formaldehyde. And those glues seems to perform better at elevated temperatures. However, not all, not all the countries in the world allow for the use of formaldehydes. So yeah, the glue is important because the better the glue performs at elevated temperature, the less likely um, to have char fall off or the lamination. And, and the, the issue when you have char fall off is that you're burning the piece of bamboo here or, or timber. And if the glue doesn't perform well, the char will fall and then you expose new virgin timber, right? New virgin material that will ignite again and you material just gonna keep burning and keep burning and you will never stop the fire. So if you have a, a, a glue a line or, or a glue that performs well, then you can protect the inner part of your structure. So that's that's mainly the 
the reason for having a, a, a good performing glue at, at elevator temperatures. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna move back to uh, Professor Zhao here. Uh, sort of a, another bigger, slightly bigger picture question uh, from Dolce Panzalan in the Philippines. Um, and, and this is related to your experiences. What were the challenges in, in building the, the 20 or, or more glue band buildings in the communities affected by the 2008 Sichuan earthquake? Um, these were the, the, the modular and temporary permanent, uh, and then some permanent structures uh, in terms of single multi-story buildings uh, and or heavy space frame structures. So your experiences, uh, uh, I guess, uh, following the 2008 Szechuan event. Well, thank you. Uh, well, during that earthquake, after that earthquake, we, we did, uh, we actually uh, received some funding from the uh, uh, Blue Moon Fund uh, based in uh, Virginia. And uh, we actually uh, delivered uh, quite a lot, more than 50 uh, uh, earthquake relief uh, uh, buildings. Uh, most of them are used for uh, small hospital, village hospitals, uh, uh, classrooms, temporary classrooms, uh, and uh, those kinds of things, uh, made with bamboo, uh, glue bamboo. Uh, we did use a, a modular design, uh, so uh, it can be shipped and also uh, built relatively easily. Uh, but maybe your question is about the a more permanent residential buildings. Uh, at the moment, I think we don't. Uh, 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 I think the 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 mass production. The capability is still not there, and we're working with some potential industry partner and trying to expand the production capability. Now, secondly, another issue, well, another important issue is also the lack of uh, specifications. I, I think uh, uh, I, I do want to uh, salute the uh, uh, leadership of uh, uh, in bar uh, uh, and also Kent, you are also working on that for the developing the uh, the ISO standards. Uh, internally in China, here we recently are working on two Chinese uh, uh, guidelines, design guidelines, uh, uh, kind of a uh, uh, kind of standards, not like a code, but it's a design guidelines. But it still need to go through different uh, review processes. Uh, we also plan to make it. Uh, uh, available in English version. Uh, one is on temporary uh, mobile uh, buildings. Uh, the other one is on the lightweight uh, uh, bamboo frame, uh, basically for residential buildings. Okay. Excellent. Um, uh, Professor Xiao, we couldn't see your face. Um, it seems the camera has problem, but uh, you, the, the answer is quite clear. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, thank you. Well, I can see my face also moving. <laughs> I can see your face. We seem to be having good. some technical issues this morning. I'm yes. Afraid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think the the screen uh, got uh, frozen for some uh, time to time. Okay. Um, I'd like to move back to Matteo, and, and this, this is a, actually a really interesting question from Elias Dimitri. Oh, I always have a problem with this one. I apologize. Dimitri, Dimitri Trakapov. This is what happens when one has a stutter. I apologize. Um, Elias from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and I apologize, Elias. I, 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 I will make this up to you. Um, and, and I'm going to read the question. And, uh, uh, do you notice any correlation between the failure type and the applied temperature? And if yes, was the failure type affected by the exposure duration? Um, and so then I think probably related to this is how important is the density when it comes to the fire resistance? It may not be. Right. Um, we, we observe some um, correlations between temperature and failure modes. Um, so, for example, in the in the compressive strain test, um, we we observe like if let me can I come back to my slides? Um, you should be able to share your screen. Yes. Uh, 
So if, can you see my screen now? Yes. So yeah. yeah. So if you look at if you look at these stress strain curves here, you see that these uh, curves have like an elastoplastic behavior with a very uh, marked elastic zone and then a plastic behavior. That's for 23 degrees, 70 and 103. But after 150, you see that the stress strain curve is different, right? And then you have something more similar to a buckling failure rather than than a, than elastoplastic uh, failure, right? Um, and sorry, and, and if you look at the failure modes here, you see, for example, this shape at 120 degrees, right? When you have inwards buckling, that's that's quite an interesting failure mode. Um, whereas if you look at this 200, 250, you see local buckling in the wall thickness. That's particularly for raw bamboo. Whereas in laminated bamboo, again, you have stress strain curves, right? But after 150 degrees, you have more like a buckling failure. And again, see the different failure mechanisms here than at 160, at 200, 250. And this is basically what I'm trying to say is that after 150 degrees, when you have the onset of the pyrolysis, when you start having actually thermal decomposition in bamboo, you change the failure mechanism of the material. So yes, it, it, there is a correlation between temperatures. That correlation is associated to the onset of pyrolysis and, and, and that has an influence in the failure mode of the sample. And, and sorry, and the other question was, um, the effect yeah. of density yeah. on the, on this beat is density related to this behavior. Uh, it, it, it was, it's hard to say because I didn't test, uh, different densities. So I, I didn't do like a, 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 an, an like comprehensive analysis on density, most to content, definitely. Because if you look at this, for example, this curve here, you see that after a hundred degrees, there is an increase of temperature sorry, an increase of strength. And this increase of strength is normally associated to the most content of the material. So there is definitely an influence of the most to content. And, and yeah, but I cannot say anything about densities. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm looking at the time here and I, I, I think maybe we should move on to the, the last segment of today's um, uh, uh, program, in which case so what I would like to do is thank the three speakers um, uh, from the first part of the program. Uh, excellent talks all um, and a good discussion following it. I apologize that we couldn't get, uh, we had some technical issues going on there that that's not our fault, that's Zoom, right? Um, and I would like to give the, 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 the floor back to, I believe Wei Jin, are you? Yes. All right. And yeah. again, I'd like to thank, can we thank all of our, our, our speakers? It's, it's hard, hard to do online. <laughs> yes, and uh, we, uh, I, I think it's all very exciting uh, presentations for us. And uh, it's the first time that Imbar has organized uh, such a size right. of, uh, uh, of uh, yes. uh, I mean, uh, over. And again, I'd like to thank Can we thank all of our, our, our speakers? Mm, somebody, could you please mute? Uh, uh, we, we have, uh, uh, I, think, uh, I think this seminar has brought people's uh, knowledge level to a new, uh, new higher level. And, uh, um, and as uh, just now I'm discussing with Kowe, uh, in, bar, uh, in the next year, we are going to uh, provide more seminars like this and regarding to construction because we, we didn't yet finish many of the problems that uh, we are facing, um, uh, we are researching on. We are still uh, keeping on researches and the task force members is still working on. So, and uh, with many, uh, many more people join us in, in researching on um, bamboo's properties and their uh, like uh, like Matteo, who re who researched 
pioneered into the fire issue and uh, many others uh, pioneered into the preservation issue and uh, many other has tried a different species of bamboo under different natural conditions. So uh, we are going to have more knowledge and we know better about this wonderful material that uh, we think uh, at the beginning, I, I like, like David has mentioned, it, it's a perfect material um, for environment and for the present situation that to, to combine ecology with, uh, uh, with uh, economy. So um, I think uh, uh, this, uh, ses this uh, seminar, we are going to continue. And uh, uh, I thank all the participants for, for the uh, attention. And next is our closing uh, session. Uh, let me invite Mr. Uh, Edwin Zia Askamia, uh, head of the research area sustainable building and real estate from the Center of Corporate Responsibility and Sustainability at the University of Zurich. He holds a uh, master's degree in urban environmental management for, uh, from Wageningen University in the Netherlands and PhD from uh, the uh, ETH Zurich in Switzerland. His work focuses on the sustainability assessments of construction materials and buildings, especially on the development of simplified methodologies to assess the life cycle costs and environmental impacts related to the construction industry. So his case studies are mainly focused on the assessment of post-disaster reconstruction and social housing projects in a wide variety of geographical contexts. His work has been published in many renowned scientific journals and uh, his, his research presented in several international conferences. And he also advised several projects and programs in Africa and Latin America in subjects to, of environmental assessment, carbon crediting and circular economy measures on the built, uh, on the built environment. He is member of the Bamboo Construction Task Force and the Swiss Experts Network. Uh, Edwin, um, would you please uh, give your closing speech? Uh, it's your floor uh, now. Thank you very much, uh, Beijing, for the kind introduction words and to uh, KBA and David uh, for the invitation and the, the challenge that you gave me of, uh, from my humble perspective, talk one of the most complex subjects in just a few minutes. So uh, I'd like to start this presentation and the presentations I do related to sustainability with this uh, uh, strip done by Monroe already in 2014. He used uh, Google engrams and recognized that the, 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 the word sustainability was becoming unsustainable. And I'm sure if we would do this uh, same graph today, we will have uh, even a more steep line there. And beyond the, the joke and the, 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 the commenter on, on, on the day from, from Mr. Monroe, I think there's a very important subtext there. And I would like to invite you all to uh, reflect on this issue because at the end of the day, the word sustainability is now used everywhere and for everything. And somehow uh, I have the feeling that also uh, it loses its meaning. And the presentation in proper, I want to start with the, the big question on what is sustainability? Uh, as I said, it's used in many contexts to mean many different things. In the work we have done, uh, uh, as it was mentioned before, and sustainability of buildings and construction materials, we came with a very engineering definition, I, I like to say, but a one that first of all is not prescriptive, uh, which give us the indication that sustainability, and that's what we want to, to show, is that sustainability is context specific. So the defining factors for a process in, in one country or the other are going to be completely different. But also 
sustainability has a very important factor that is the time. Uh, many products and processes can be sustainable, but the question and the most important question when we are talking on this subject is how long are they going to be sustainable? We have seen it in many bio-based materials and many other enterprises that they can work for a couple of years, but in the long term, they can fail because the defining factors were not properly understood. And what are the factors? And is the, the, the biggest question is they are very different each time. It depends on what we are looking and where we are looking at. So it needs to be context, context specific. Within this frame, myself and many others have ask this question again on which construction materials can be used for sustainable development of the built environment. And more importantly for me, how can we assess them? Uh, for a bit more than a decade now, I've been working on this field of uh, life cycle assessment, which basically is a methodology that is quantitative and provides us with uh, results that are comparable and that are solid methodologically and uh, allow us to understand this relation between the human activities and the natural environment. So not everything is perfect and there's still many, many challenges. And I think one of the most important is the lack of representative data. This is fortunately changing for a good but also, uh, especially for uh, bio-based construction materials like bamboo and timber, we have a huge variability on the production processes. Uh, especially in bamboo, we see that almost every factory has a different way of processing. Really so it's very now. difficult to create these oh, this models yeah. to represent it. And finally, uh, there is a huge a financial commitment that is required to produce this data and to share it. So that immediately creates a, a entry barrier for many, uh, especially for alternative construction materials. So there's still many things uh, to be done. Just as a small uh, parenthesis there, uh, fortunately through a collaboration between the IMBAR and Bamboo Construction Task Force, the University of Zurich and the association EcoInvent, we have uh, successfully submitted the first data sets for bamboo construction materials for life cycle assessment uh, to be included in the next version of the uh, life cycle assessment database EcoInvent next year. So that's a big step. And I want to use also this space to thank uh, IMBAR and EcoInvent for all the support and their contributions uh, to make this uh, a reality is something we have dreamed for many years, uh, decades now, and, and hopefully we, we will finish all the review process soon and, and next year we will have that. So that's very good news on, on that front. Now going back to the question of, on sustainability, uh, we have done a lot of research, many, many different contexts, and, and, and projects. And today I'm just going to super uh, quickly present you some of the results that I think that are more interesting and that uh, at least to me brought the more uh, important insights on these questions on sustainability of alternative construction materials. And it's this project where we assessed the sustainability of 20 different uh, shelter designs from the International Federation of Red Cross and a couple of designs that came from a project we developed at the ETH Zurich and uh, another from our colleagues at the NGO ECOSUR in Nicaragua. Uh, what is interesting from, from, from this project uh, is also that we have a wide variety of materials in a wide variety on, of context and we developed methodologies to assess not only the environmental performance of these buildings, but also the economic performance and with the support from Arup, uh, also the uh, structural, and we called it in, in this uh, research, technical performance. 
one of the most interesting results we have there at the end is this figure where in the <clears throat> x-axis, we present the environmental impact, again, using the life cycle assessment methodology. And in the y-axis, we have the cost in a relation to the area and the lifespan of those buildings. <clears throat> uh, as you can see, bamboo presents a very a good result, the lower in this, in this case, we, we consider the lower the, the impact and the lower the cost, the better. And that was <clears throat> the intention that we had. Uh, but also we can see that other construction materials can produce this, uh, we could achieve this uh, level of performance. And this uh, for us was first of all, very interesting because uh, in some cases, uh, we won't be able uh, to use bamboo because it's not a, a resource available in the location or there are no building codes or regulations that allow it. So in this context of post-disaster reconstruction was also interesting to see that other materials can achieve also this level of performance. But more importantly, and this was an insight that the Professor Haber had at the moment and say, at when, when you look at this picture, you see that with bamboo, you have the best opportunities to produce a sustainable building. It's where you have the, 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 the better chances. And I think that is something that we need, and it's my invitation for today to, to reflect on this. Uh, I honestly believe First of all, that we need to understand the sustainability of, of, of the construction or materials beyond the environmental performance. It's somehow a connection there, but there is more to that. We can have very good environmental uh, performance in the material, but for instance, if the economical performance or the industrialization process is not appropriate, the, the material is not going to be sustainable. Uh, Moreover, and uh, um, I, I think we need to really start understanding that we need more than bamboo to construct sustainable buildings. We need to understand the applications, the requirements, and which materials are appropriated to fulfill those tasks. Bamboo has very and many varied applications where it performs great but it doesn't mean that we can put it in everything. And beyond that, when we talk about sustainability, we need responsible use and production of these natural goods. There is, uh, even though they are renewable and bamboo is very fast uh, renovating, this still needs uh, appropriated management of the plantation and of all our production processes. And finally, I think we need Beyond all this, we need is to construct and to build sustainable value chains that allows all the people along that change from the production to the construction to the use to benefit from this, uh, from these uh, construction materials and that we can continue using them in the long term. Just to to finalize uh, my intervention, I wanted to use the opportunity to invite you. We are uh, currently uh, editing a special issue in the journal Sustainability together with uh, Professor Trujillo on bio-based construction materials. And I'm also uh, editing another issue in the African Technology Development Forum journal, looking more into appropriate construction materials more in general, but focusing in the African built environment for those special issues, we have some, at least I'm trying to coach and support new and young researchers in the whole publication process and preparation of the uh, uh, papers. So if uh, any of you are interested in, in, in contributing or interested in publica publishing uh, a paper with us, uh, there's my email. So please uh, uh, just contact me and, and we can take it from there. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Edwin. 
I, I couldn't agree more on your final remarks that uh, we need the right materials for the right applications understood from an engineering and constructive perspective. And we need responsible use and production of the natural goods as bamboo. I believe for the whole five sessions, we've been depicting to the world on these concepts. All the presentation seems to be pointing to this, that we need to understand bamboo poles or bamboo engineered materials properties very well. And we need to design and process and use the, the material based on the good understandings, not only the properties, <coughs> but also the purposes or say applications. And we need to be responsible while using the materials. Those I believe are key to make bamboo a real sustainable construction material. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, uh, next, please allow me to invite Mr. David uh, Trujillo, Chair of Inbar Construction Task Force, Assistant Professor at Coventry University, to deliver the closing speech of the uh, international online seminar, Bamboo, a very sustainable construction material. David. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so the last five weeks have been a great journey. I'm sure you can agree with me that the caliber of the presentations has been very, very high. We have seen very beautiful buildings and structures using bamboo columns and engineered bamboo. We have had presenters from China, Italy, the Philippines, the USA, Indonesia, the UK, China, Australia, and Switzerland. We have seen how much this field has developed and how promising it is. For, from a, but it's far from an exhausted field of research. There's still so much to learn. Dr. Zaya, Dr. Zaya has set the context. Yes, we believe bamboo is sustainable, but we need to substantiate this. I believe those of us who love this material have to challenge our own beliefs and demonstrate that bamboo is in fact a sustainable material. I want to take this opportunity to thank you, many people who have made this event possible. So I want to thank the team at INBAR, who is Liu Kewei, Pablo Hakame, Durai Jaharaman, Borja de la Peña, Jin Wei, who have all helped with the moderation of this event. I also want to thank uh, Sebastian Kaminsky, Mauricio Cárdenas, and Ken Harris from the task force, who've also uh, acted as moderators for the event. I want to thank all of the speakers for taking the time and delivering very, very interesting and very valuable presentations. And um, I also would like to thank the institutional support we've received from IMBAR and the South China Agricultural University, with whom, uh, without whom we would have not been able to put this event together. And last but foremost, I want to thank the audience from across the world, across time zones, who have joined Find us to listen, who have uh, raised very valuable and interesting questions and uh, have loyally joined in for five weeks to learn more about bamboo. Thank you very, very much to everyone. And uh, as with Kent, a round of applause. Thank you for all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Uh, I, I think uh, mm, uh, just just as I said, uh, Yimbar, uh, we didn't uh, with this uh, seminar, although it's closed now, but we didn't finish the exploration of uh, uh, bamboo's research. So definitely, Yimbar will continue to present you new uh, seminars, and we we are going to release our new uh, research results and uh, uh, updates about uh, the our uh, new uh, construction. Uh, samples. So uh, what I want, it, it is not easy for us to, to, to be here, just as David said. So I, I want to keep everybody of you in the loop. 
So if you wish, and because you have registered, and so you express your interest, and some has also said that they would like to re uh, receive um, further information about our webinars, and I will keep you in the loop. And uh, I, I think, Imbar, uh, if we have conditions in the next year, we might uh, want to uh, present uh, a permanent uh, forum uh, for you to discuss the key issues to exchange uh, from time to time. And uh, on a, uh, now I would like to say something about uh, uh, this important note about the final quiz for this seminar and the certificate. And I, I think a lot of participants is asking these questions. And uh, so I would like to remind you about the final quiz. And uh, we, we, we will send you email um, two days after this session, that, that means 3rd December, 3rd day, please check your email for quiz questions and you have two weeks to respond to the quiz. Please feedback to training at imbar.int. So the deadline is uh, 17 December 20, uh, 2020, um, 12 o'clock Beijing time. Uh, New York Gitto time is uh, 16 December 2020. Uh, that's uh, 11 o'clock p.m. Uh, London time is 17 December 2020, 2 a.m. So the time is calculated by the time we, we receive the answer. So those who, who passed the quiz will be able to get um, the certificate of achievements of this seminar. And, uh, and the others who, uh, who has uh, only participated uh, more than three times of this session will get a certificate of participation. So uh, this is uh, what, we, what we are going to uh, follow. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's about time for us to have group photos. <laughs> so uh, please turn on your, uh, your phone, so I will say. Qinghui, yeah. Uh, Professor Xiao, uh, we couldn't get your face here. I don't know why. Anyway. Uh, yeah, one, something one, wrong, I think. <laughs> one, two, three. Ouch, that's good. Next one. One, two, three. Oh, next page. Oh, we have so many people here. Our big family of uh, bamboo. Maybe you say bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> say bamboo. 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 <laughs> yes. Next. <laughs> yes. So many people. Okay. Okay, we are done. Thank you, our bamboo construction family. And uh, I wish you uh, in, in advance, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And uh, next year, we're going to see you again. Uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you bye so bye. much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Congratulations bye. to everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. 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 Stay safe, everyone. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Michael. Gracias. Michael. 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 Yeah. Hi. 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 Oh, Natalia, I saw oh, yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Many friends. Oh, my God. In 78 countries, Kuwait.
Thank you. Agency, we should uh, we should uh, record all the mundo. Thank you. Ah, this part of the video. And also, Kowei. Thank you. Thank you. This part of the video, Jun Qi, will be put in the next video. Let's see. Now we're recording. We will not close the video until you. For all the companions, that have a happy year. This is our friend Luke. Family. This is our friend Luke. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Hope you can participate in the next in the next year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <laughs> Bye. 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 Yeah, we're going to celebrate Christmas with the giant panda session. Yes. 